I am the uh, director of reproductive endocrinology and infertility here at Baylor University, and I'm also the chief of the reproductive services here at Texas Children's. You're a busy, busy woman. <laughs> <laughs> I try to. <laughs> oh, you want to be busy? <laughs> yes. <laughs> How many children do you have? I have two. Two children, okay. Like, are you all set? Yes, we're Oh, okay, I'm just making sure, okay. So, Dr. Didi, can you tell me, um, a lot of people talk about biological clocks. What does that mean in medical terms? Well, uh, all women are born with a fixed number of eggs, and that number only decreases as they age. And so uh, that is the biological clock. So women typically will have no more eggs on their ovaries uh, once they um, are in menopause, so typically around the age of 50 to 51. However, um, getting pregnant and having children will become more and more difficult after age 37. So women would have to um, reset their biological clock actually to before that age 37 uh, to possibly have uh, uh, a conception. So that's possible to reset your biological clock? So not necessarily. Uh, for resetting, uh, I mean they would need to take some steps to uh, possibly, um, I don't know how to say this, um, so they would have to take some steps to ensure that possibly even after age 37 mm -hmm. they will have no difficulties in conceiving. Right, okay, that makes perfect sense. Oh, okay, so a woman watching this now, um, recognizing that, oh, the biological clock is a real thing and I should start paying attention. Uh, I'm not ready to have a kid yet. Perhaps they're 30, maybe 29, maybe even 34. What do you advise them to do at this point? So, um, it would be ideal if uh, all women could have uh, uh, a checkup of their ovarian reserve, uh, possibly even before age 30, mm. in such a way that uh, uh, once we identify whether their ovarian reserve is normal or not, we can counsel them on what is the best next step for them. Do you need to speak with a specialist to to understand what your ovarian I would recommend is? Uh, yes to always speak with a specialist just to um, avoid the possible uh, false reassurance and at the same time also to avoid alarmism on what is the real ovarian reserve. So how do you find a specialist? Do you go into your OBGYN and say I'd like to speak with a specialist to learn more about what possibilities I have and to see where I am health-wise before I get started? So that's a great the first step. Um, typically though you would like to have the advice of a specialist uh, like a reproductive endocrinologist uh, um, that can advise on what is the real meaning of those results. How do you find that specialist? So the, uh, a general doctor can certainly uh, make a referral for that. Otherwise, many women could also just uh, um, come in for self-referrals. Okay, so maybe just do a Google search to find a reproductive specialist or... <laughs> I don't want to advise people to do a Google search to find a doctor, <laughs> but um, maybe ask a friend, maybe do phone books even exist anymore? <laughs> or call the um, hospital? How do I, I, yes. Like seriously, well, like even, I'm just wondering how do you, how what are the first steps to beyond if you even if you don't have um, a, a doctor, do I just call the hospital and say, do you have specialists who uh, work with reproduction? Uh, absolutely, you okay. can do that. Uh, however, Google is the first step that can be taken. Uh, you just have to. Um, to make sure that you write the reproductive endocrinology and infertility and then uh, and that will be the first step to identify a physician. Okay, so at what point is it too late to consider freezing your eggs? Is there ever a point? Please say no. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, unfortunately uh, there are some instances when it uh, becomes uh, uh, possibly futile. So if a woman is over 45 
um, it becomes a futile because the number of eggs that would need to be frozen is so high that it is uh, uh, unrealistic to think that we could actually retrieve all those eggs uh, out of that woman. When you're going through the procedure, how many eggs are you retrieving? <laughs> so that one depends uh, also on the ovarian reserve. Typically to identify um, a dose that we will use for the stimulation, we will take into consideration the age of the woman, uh, her BMI, and her ovarian reserve. The ovarian reserve is typically um, assessed with uh, AMH or antimullerian hormone, uh, which will tell us uh, what, what is the uh, approximate number of eggs that we can identify. An ultrasound on cycle day three uh, will also identify the antral follicles that uh, we will stimulate uh, with the stimulation for the egg retrieval. And so that number of eggs that we uh, eventually retrieve depends on the number of the antral follicles that are uh, in the ovaries. Okay, so once you retrieve the eggs, what happens from there? The, uh, so once they come out, the eggs come out in the follicular fluid and they're surrounded by um, a couple of layers of cells that are called the granulosa cells or also cumulus. And uh, those cells are uh, very uh, gently stripped off the egg, and then the egg is uh, frozen by uh, plunging it into liquid nitrogen. And how long do they stay, can they stay frozen for? So I like to say indefinitely, as long as the environmental factors in that specific laboratory um, are correct. Okay, um, but how, how long can a woman wait before she uses those eggs? So that is something that... Uh, um, I mean uh, age-wise, I'm sorry. Oh, correct. So the, uh, a woman can conceive, especially in our clinic, we have an age limit uh, for conception which, uh, with uh, assisted reproduction, which is 50 years old. So uh, that is what we typically um, require. So what is the success rate though? Is, is it more successful if you're younger or does it, does it decrease as you get older or does it stay the same? So it's, uh, it's more successful when uh, a woman is younger. Uh, typically before age 34, that's where, uh, where the um, uh, efficiency of the ovary is, uh, is at its uh, highest point. Uh, however, even women, even if they're older than 34, they can still um, they can still see what their ovarian reserve is. The quality of the eggs, unfortunately, also decreases with age. So that is another factor that we need to keep into consideration. But you're saying that a 50-year-old could possibly use the eggs that she had frozen and become pregnant. So we typically don't recommend this. Oh, you mean if a 50-year-old that has frozen yes. eggs way before, absolutely. Yes. Wow, I, I mean, mind blown because we're always told that one of the questions my producer asked me to ask was, can you do it after 40? And you're saying, well, can you, you can freeze eggs after 40. Correct. But you can get those eggs all the way up until 50. Exactly. Wow. And so what the egg freezing does to women is to give them the reproductive freedom of getting pregnant and having a family whenever they're ready. Mm, okay. Those, those, thank you so much. That was so helpful. So who's the best candidate for this process? So um, it depends on... Uh, um, on several factors again. When we do elective egg freezing, uh, we look at the age of the woman uh, and again the, her ovarian reserve. Um, however, there are some categories of women that, uh, uh, that are um, indicated, so have a, a very important indication for egg freezing. So these are women that uh, are, uh, are about to uh, be exposed to chemotherapy, for instance, like cancer patients, mm -hmm. but also women with um, 
other autoimmune or uh, hematologic conditions that require chemotherapy, or women with a moderate to severe endometriosis. Those are the perfect candidates for egg freezing at whatever age they are. Mm -hmm. Of course, before 45, that would be advisable. Mm -hmm. um, however, um, however, those are the patients that would definitely need to have that procedure performed. And, the, and any other woman who is saying, I want to have kids, but not yet is also a good candidate for this too. Absolutely. Okay. So uh, as we were saying before, it would be advisable or ideal if uh, uh, women could assess their ovarian reserve because there is also another category of women that has what we call diminished ovarian reserve. Mm -hmm. So those women have a diminished reserve of follicles and eggs despite a younger age. Mm -hmm. And most of the times in those cases, we will never find a cause for it. Mm -hmm. But knowing it uh, would make uh, their, um, their building uh, a family easier in the future. Wow, okay. Um, so, let me see. Did that, no. So can you talk about the cost of this procedure? So the cost of this uh, uh, is, uh, uh, is related to the stimulation, the medications that we use, uh, the number of ultrasounds that we perform, and, uh, uh, and of course then the retrieval and the freezing of the eggs. Um, and the cost may vary uh, greatly from uh, practice to practice. However, typically is less than $10,000 for one cycle. Really? Okay, I mean, that's expensive, but not as expensive as I thought it was going to be. Right, it is less expensive than IVF, for instance, mm -hmm. because when we do in vitro fertilization, we fertilize those eggs. Okay. And so there's a, an additional cost for the laboratory that is added to uh, the cost of just retrieving the eggs. How many cycles do women normally need? They just do one, right? And they freeze those eggs? Uh, depending on their age and their ovarian reserve and the number of uh, follicles that they have in the ovaries, okay. uh, it might vary. Sometimes we need two or even three cycles of egg freezing uh, before they reach the ideal number. Okay. Um, is there anything else you think we need to address or pe women should know about this option? Um, yes, so um, they should consider uh, the, the reasons why they're doing it and when they uh, expect to use those eggs. Uh, mostly because uh, uh, the literature research has, uh, um, I'm sorry, research in literature has suggested that women who, um, uh, who basically uh, has uh, an egg freezing and they're too young, uh, most of the times they don't use their eggs mm -hmm. afterwards. So uh, I typically recommend uh, uh, women in their uh, 30 and 34 years old to, um, to freeze their eggs because in those cases, uh, that's when um, it is almost certain that they will use those eggs in the future. I can't believe that women in their 20s are freezing their eggs. Um, they just seem so fertile in your 20s, but I guess you never know. Um, okay, I just want to make sure, if you don't mind, if I, that I Absolutely. ask all, all these questions. If I may suggest, um, sure. since Lauren did the embryo and not the egg freezing, is that something you That's a great question. 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 Okay, can you talk about that? And I didn't ask Lauren about that. Can you, Lauren did the, I'm sorry, the terms, embryo, embryo did the embryo, and then there's yes. the freezing of the egg. So what's the difference? Um, so the difference is uh, it, uh, that, of course, when we freeze uh, an embryo, it, the egg has already been fertilized, and, uh, and we follow those embryos in the laboratory, in the incubator, for five days before we freeze them. So when we freeze them, we know that uh, uh, they have approximately 100 to 120 cells 
in the embryo. The egg instead is only one cell. So if something goes wrong in the freezing part or the thawing or warming uh, part, uh, in the case of the egg, we would lose the whole egg. In the case of the embryo, uh, instead, we don't lose the whole embryo. We just, uh, at the most, we would lose a few cells. In addition to that, depending on uh, uh, the age of the woman, some of the eggs will not be genetically normal or euploid. Mm -hmm. And so those eggs uh, in the future will not give you a... Um, a pregnancy most likely, not even the creation of an embryo. So whenever we freeze eggs, unfortunately, we have to take that into account. And the number of eggs varies with age, but a minimum of 20 eggs would ensure, even in a very young woman, a 95% um, a chances of conception. So you're going to get 20 eggs just to, just to increase the chances of being able to um, be pregnant. The At least pregnant. that would be advisable, okay. correct, in the, if the woman is younger than 34. For instance, if the woman is instead between 37 and 40 mm. years old, then you would need a, about 40 eggs in order to ensure that 95% chances of one conception. So the difference is that if we create the embryos from before, uh, that patient will be uh, able to make her own decision on whether she needs more cycles of IVF versus not. Okay, so is it, is it more likely to be successful if, you, if there's an embryo compared to an egg? Technically speaking, yes. The pregnancy rates are higher if we have one embryo than if we have let's say, mm. even five eggs. Hmm. Is it more expensive to do the embryo in the egg? It is a little more expensive because there is a, a, a laboratory part that is uh, in addition to um, creating just uh, or freezing just the eggs. Speaking of laboratories, um, is that something that the doctor, like whoever you're seeing, they will take care of that part for you or as a patient do you is there a way that you can make sure that the facility where your egg or your embryo is going is operating up to par so any fertility clinic has a laboratory okay. attached um, there's no uh, one men team basically okay. it's always a team of people and uh, the phys the REI physician always partners uh, with uh, the laboratory uh, in order to have the best successes okay I think those are all of my questions Do, can you think of anything else as a woman that you might want to know <laughs> mm. no I think was there anything else um, you have anything else you want to share? Um, no, all I, I do all the information. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, no, one thing that I wanted to say is that uh, um, in women, even with diminished ovarian reserve, uh, they can still conceive, but it might become more difficult as they age more. So in, uh, uh, in those cases, those women are the ones that should possibly consider egg freezing. As I was preparing for this story, um, I was telling Rosalina that um, it kind of hit me like, whoa, I, I do a lot of stories, but this one hit me kind of hard because I'm like, okay, you're getting to that point where you have to make a decision and it's like, either you're going to be a mother or it's not going to happen. And so it's just, I don't know what my point was for this. Uh, oh. If you could say to women who are watching this, because to hear you say that sometimes women can see that 50, is that what, like it's a possibility? I know it's slim, I know it's slim, <laughs> but what you're saying is that there's a chance. And so I just would love to offer some type of hope to a woman who's watching this. And if you had some words for, of advice that you could share with them um, when they're trying to un uh, determine if they will ever have a kid or maybe they've been trying or maybe they don't have a partner yet. and. It's never, you just never know, right, I'm guessing. It's true, it's true. Um, and uh, uh, what, uh, um, 
what I would like to um, do though is separate the egg freezing from the ability to conceive. Okay. So a woman can conceive even after menopause sometimes um, and uh, again in our clinic we have this age limit. Some other clinics might not have the same age limits. Okay. Um, however, as long as we have uh, eggs and we can create an embryo, yes, absolutely, a woman can uh, conceive with those embryos created early on, even at the age of 50. Every woman is different, every body is different, and every journey is different. I absolutely agree. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. That was so helpful. No, thank you. I'm so 